Welcome, everybody. We're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Could you join me? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, please. Councilmember Bush? Here. Campbell? Here. Clay? Here. Gasse? Here. Latender? Here. Levesque? Here. Matola? Here. Nieves Mateus? Here. O'Connell? Here. Rogers? Here. Tedford? Here. And Wendis? Here. Mr. Mayor, you have a quorum. Thank you. All right. Tonight we're starting with the adoption of the town council rules. Ryan? Mr. Mayor, pursuant to the Charter, Chapter 5, Section 4, entitled Procedures, the Town Council hereby approves the adoption of the 2021-2023 Town Council Rules as presented. So, Julie, seconded. All right, questions? Ann? Um, yes, Your Honor, I'd just like some clarification, and maybe we need to... Um, Add some clarification. So on the old one, it's number 11. I don't know if that still stays the same, but it's related to um, the council member shall not speak more than twice on any motion, that item. So the question is, um, does this, the twice include a question, or does the twice include just speaking? And a question is a question. Well, a question usually leads into, basically, if you're asking a question, you have the floor which means, you know, if you have follow-up or anything like that, but yes, it does. Can we make that distinction? Um, or just say... I believe that's what's in Robert's rules, is, is what's written. Mm -hmm. um, would there be opportunity at some point? I've already asked three. <laughs> What'd you say? Would there be to uh, revise that if we check Robert's rules and just make that clearer? Because sometimes you just want to ask a question and it does lead into something in which you have something more to say. So it seems to me it's kind of limiting, that's all. Well, I think that rule, we really started doing that rule way back when, when the meetings went till 1, 2 in the morning. I remember. And, and that's why we <laughs> stick to the rules. Right. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? All those in favor? Unanimous. Uh, nomination and election of uh, Mayor Pro Temp. I have a nomination. Yes, I have a nomination. May uh, I'd like to nominate Brian Matola as Mayor Pro Tem. Is there a second? Bill? I'd like to second the nomination of uh, Councilman Mottola for that job. He, uh, he's a senior council person. He has the knowledge and experience to perform that job well. And uh, I, I think we should vote for him. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, all those in favor? Unanimous. All right, adoption of the town council schedule. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, the town council hereby approves the FOIA 2022 town council schedule as presented in the memorandum from Mayor Daniel A. Champagne to the town council dated November 10th, 2021. Second. Mary Ann seconded. All right, I'm gonna uh, actually ask for an amendment on this. Uh, so I'm gonna ask somebody to propose it. Because on October 4th, 2022 is Yom Kippur, uh, begins the evening. Um, so I'd like to change that date to Monday, October 3rd, 2022. 
So I'm going to need somebody to actually make a motion on that. Julie? May I make the motion to change the town council meeting from October 4th, 2022 to October 3rd, Monday, 2022? Second. Seconded by uh, Linda. All right. Uh, any questions on that motion within the motion? No? Okay. All in favor of the motion of the change? Unanimous. Now back to the original schedule. Are there any questions on the original schedule? All right. All those in favor of the amended schedule? Unanimous. Okay. We made it through it. <laughs> All right. We're going to leave the executive sessions to the end and we're going to go to uh, citizen. Oh, I'm sorry. Citizens Forum is next. Anybody here for Citizens Forum? No, that's fine. Almost skipped it. My name is Gerald Gonzalez. Hold on. General. Turn the mic on first. My name is Gennaro Gonzalez III. I live on 137 West Main Street, Vernon, Connecticut. Today I brought my aunt with me. Her name is Sylvia. She took the vaccine, okay? It made me cry when she took the vaccine, when I went to her house, because yeah. she didn't know me. I can't hear you. If you can sit, Gennaro, that'd be great. When I went to her house, and she told me she took the vaccine, I had cried, literally. I was upset. I laughed about it because it's unbelievable that my aunt really took this one. This is my mom's sister, you know? My mother, my father, my grandmother, my great-grandmother all died on me back to back, back to back, back to back, within three years, all of cancer, you know? So I stress about that, okay? So I'll come here to show you today how this magnet sticks in her arm because who came to you? Pfizer, right? In their vehicle and gave you the shots, right? Oh. Shepherd's Park, which my cousin is the, was the manager there, but she left, and now she runs the ones here in Vernon, okay? Quítate el suerte, quítate la camisa para yo ponerte esto como te lo puse antes. General, just have her come up to, you, to the Ven desk aquí. with you. And if she can just give her name and address, too. <laughs> just your name and address. Just. My name, oh, my name, Sylvia Rivera, and I live in 176 on Avenue, Hartford. Go ahead, Janari. Now, when I did it last time, I didn't do it with the guitar. But when I put it, para tu momento. When I did it last time, it stuck. I actually posted it on Facebook. That was like unbearable for me because. Mm. <laughs> there, there it goes right there. Oops. I swear it sticks too. On Burr Farms on the corner, right on between the muscle. Okay? Now, when you leave it there, it'll stay. Okay? but sometimes it'll drop off. This is how you know that this stuff is not good for you, um, Mayor, okay? When you have on paper that there's nanotechnology in it, it's wrong. It's really, really wrong. Like, that's amazing that it sticks to her arm. And I'm frustrated because she didn't know. And she's, she she's was in the National Guard for many, many of years. I have family that are military. A lot of them ain't too much educated on what's going on today. But you know, this is why I asked and I submitted a Freedom of Information Act form. This is why I asked and I submitted a Freedom of Information Act form because magnets can tell who got vaccinated because there is biotechnology in it. Siéntate. Okay? And it could prove who's been vaccinated, you know? And I know a lot of people say it's fake. If you could took the vaccine, let me put this on you. You know, that's just the way it has to be to show principles, morals, and respect, you know? And a few people like you, very honest with me, and I respect that. And that comes a long, long way, 
okay? So I'm trying to make sure that this type of stuff don't happen to no more like my aunt because she lives at Shepherd's Park. She lives in an old, basically old folks home. She's been living there, my family's been living there for over a hundred years. My great grandmother died there, passed down lineage, okay? But she's my last of the Mohegans for me. And you know, that's what happens when you take the vaccine. It's just, I don't understand why that particular vaccine does that when the flu don't do that, the other ones don't do that either. Now, if I can get, now I have a thousand pound weight capacity of a magnet. If I put that in your arm and you took the vaccine, I could literally pull the nanotechnology out of you because I've seen it on YouTube and know how to do it. You slice the arm and you guide it and it comes right out. It's, there's being done right now. People are in taking that stuff out and it's coming out and they put it on plastic, they put it in a liquid like baby oil or olive oil so people can see how it moves. And, it, and, and the first people that did it were Germans. Then Russians did it. Now Americans are doing it. They're taking it out of their arm. You know, so, you know, we got to be very wary about this so-called vaccine and what it really does, you know, especially here in Vernon. And I just wanted to show you your eyes for yourselves. I also posted it on Facebook and I also have a, um, I have other equipment to tell if a person has it or not. There's a specific light that you can have that makes your makes it glow like a fluorescent light when you were you took the vaccine. It'll make that spot real black and dark or purple. It does, it's been done. I've seen it with my own eyes. So it's like, if you took the vaccine, I could prove it if you took it or not. It's just like that, <clears throat> solid paperwork, like that. Okay, they just don't want people to know how you can check for the vaccine. Okay, that's the only thing, you know, but my people's, my GOP, I'm trying to protect y'all because that's who I'm down with, you know? Other than that, you know, it's just things ain't right, things ain't, what the eyes don't see doesn't mean it's there, but mayor, I appreciate it. I just wanted to bring proof here. That's it. And uh, be careful out there. They stole my calico converter right at Frank Peppers. I thought I was a gangster. Yeah. <laughs> they took mine for a ride. Don't mind me leaving. I might sound like a dirt bike, okay? Oh, jeez. All right. <laughs> Apologize, people. They vicious today. Did you file a report? No, what I did was I submitted a, a Freedom of Information Act form to the Manchester Town Hall seeking permission for the CCTV cameras, and I went to the Buckland Hills Mall to seek permission from their camera so I can okay. catch a couple of myself. And then Is there anybody else for a public or citizens forum? Anybody else? All right, hearing none. I'm going to close citizens forum. All right. We're going to hold off on the, the um, executive session. Uh, I'd like to go to the presentations. Rob, why don't we start with you? Uh, thank you, Mayor, Town Council. Uh, for those uh, members of the town council that haven't heard me speak before, uh, my name is Robert Grasses. I'm the director of the Vernon Water Pollution Control Authority. Uh, I've been employed with uh, Vernon since 2013 and uh, director since 2015. And I, I basically, um, uh, this upgrade has started uh, in my tenure. Um, I haven't given an update in uh, quite a while, so I'll just kind of uh, recap some, some of the highlights. So again, the uh, upgrade is progressing. Um, it's under budget, and the plan is uh, meeting its uh, current regulatory requirements. Um, things that have happened this year, the uh, UV disinfection was impl implemented uh, for the disinfection season, which runs from May 1st through September 30th. Uh, both channels were modified to install the equipment, and both were ready in March. Uh, this is the first year that we used uh, UV disinfection uh, rather than the chlorine disinfection and chlorine residual removal that we've done for the last you know, 30 some odd years. Uh, the system worked well with no effluent violations for the season and is more cost effective and safer uh, method of disinfection. Uh, phosphorus treatment was, was also slated to begin in April. However, due to COVID related delays, uh, did not start until mid-May. Uh, Connecticut DEP was made aware of this delay in early March uh, and we have not received uh, any fines or correspondence that this delay was unacceptable. 
Uh, phosphorus season uh, runs from April 1st through October 31st, and the system worked well to meet our permit limits once it was started. Uh, a couple other highlights. The uh, new 2,000 kilowatt generator um, is now in service, um, and it now uh, gives us all the emergency power that we need for the plant. And the underground storage tank that supplied the old north generator uh, with diesel fuel was removed and former uh, closure was performed. Uh, no contamina uh, contamination of the site was found. Uh, right now, work is uh, progressing uh, to have uh, enough new clarifiers online, uh, new uh, return pump building equipment installed, uh, new secondary sludge systems, including new tanks and dewatering equipment installed, and both retrofitted, uh, retrofitted uh, aeration tanks, number five and number six online. Um, so that will start the um, chlorine, uh, the carbon reduction process, um, which will finally convert the plant from the packed war Zimpro secondary treatment to a more conventional biological phosphorus and nitrogen removable, uh, removal secondary treatment. Um, in addition, a new SCADA system is coming online, uh, one tr uh, treatment process at a time, and now controls UV disinfection, phosphorus treatment, intermediate, and drainage pumping. Uh, plant staff are being trained on the operation and maintenance of the new equipment as it comes online um, by the uh, system vendors uh, and are learning the new SCADA system to ensure proper operation, monitoring, and troubleshooting. Uh, as far as the schedule of the project, uh, there, there were two delays, uh, one due to COVID that affected the phosphorus treatment, and the second uh, related to the wet weather we had this summer uh, that did not allow the plant to release some equipment um, during uh, the normal dry summer that would be available. So it kind of pushed the uh, project back a little bit. So the projected final completion date has moved from December 2022 to April 2023. Uh, that's kind of my recap. I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, that the council might have. All right. Any questions? Mike. Through you, Mayor. Good, uh, good evening. Um, due to the delays uh, pushed to the 2023, um, the, um, obviously we can't foresee weather-wise and stuff coming up, but um, is there any way we can hopefully cap this off so if we have further bad weather or something, it's not pushed even further down the road and kicking the can down and possibly going into 2024? I wish we could answer that, but we really can't because we don't know what's gonna happen. To give you an example, um, normally the, the plant handles about six million gallons. During these rainstorms this summer, it was going up to 12 and a half million. That's more than double what the plant normally handles. Wow. So under those conditions, you can't bypass too much um you know and start working on some of the machinery so it, you know it, it's all circumstantial as to what's going to happen okay and you know covid obviously who would have ever thought and we're in compliance with the state they're not yeah they're not bothering you oh no. anything all right thank you Brian. through you mr mayor and mr grasses thank you for coming I, when we read the minutes of the meeting you have something called like stored materials Correct. Are we paying to store material? I, I don't understand what that is. That's why I'm asking. Um, it's one thing that uh, we specified in a contract. Uh, due to my experience in, in um, other upgrades, um, it, you have to be careful not to procure equipment and have it sitting around the plant or outside um, for possibly years before it's installed. So we had uh, the contract stipulate that any stored materials had to be that was received on site had to be uh, put into service um, within 60 days. And so with the COVID delays, um, the building advisory committee, which meets every two weeks, uh, reviews these stored materials and makes, makes sure that um, one approves um, the acceptance of them, uh, but also makes sure that they're gonna be installed uh, relatively shortly. So again, it's, it's kind of the approval process. Thank you very much. Thank you. Julie. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Mr. Grasses. Good evening. Best thing I heard was that you're under budget. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, in, in light of that, a um, couple questions. The 2,000 kilowatt generator that you're now in service, 
Is that a, a larger increase in electric, electricity costs? I don't know what we had before. Uh, well, we had two um, generators. One was a 500 kilowatt, and the other one was a um, 1.5 kilowatt generator. Um, one was from the 93 upgrade, the other one was from the 79 upgrade. Um, so uh, it made sense to replace both those generators with a larger unit. So have you seen an increase in the electrical costs substantially? No. No, okay. No, again, this is just to provide um, um, emergency power. Okay. Um, and forgive my ignorance on this, but your underground tank that you removed, when you remove them, you put new tanks somewhere else? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. So the, um, the new generator actually has an above ground storage tank, so it sits on top of it. So all those underground storage tank regulations and possible contamination, we no longer have that issue. Right, and, and it's above ground, like where? It actually is a, it's a square tank that the actually generator sits on top of. So if you um, ever... That the, that the generator actually sits oh, on top of. Okay, I'm of. sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Okay, just was curious about that. Um, you mentioned that uh, you're training um, the crew on new equipment. Um, has that is that along with their daily work, or has, have you had to increase overtime, or has it affected your budget at all? You know, are, are they doing longer hours or anything like that? Uh, no, the uh, contractor is pretty um, uh, flexible. Um, and allows us to kind of dictate when that training is going to happen because we want to have the um, the most amount of operators there for the training um, and also we call in operators from um, the, the second and third shift so there is a slight increase but again the benefit of having them get that training from vendors is um, is important but but the vendors have been working with you to sort of accommodate those schedules Correct. well yes. that's great okay I just wondered if it you know in, in, there's always that um, increase in the curve to train people, so I didn't know if it was substantial or the fact that they're working with you helps to minimize that. Um, oh, that was it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Ian. Um, yes, uh, through you, Your Honor, uh, and thank you, Rob, for being here, and thank you for the work that, uh, that you're doing there. Um, I uh, also read in the minutes that Brian referenced that, uh, th and this is because the, related to the extension that you would be claiming a force mayor, in other words, the storm. And uh, I think that's, um, as I remember, was there a, a penalty if you had, um, or maybe you were, uh, if the uh, contract you know, was going to be extended originally or delayed that you were subject to some penalties or you weren't going to get some credits. I'm not sure how, one way or the other. But by the contract claiming force mayor, you'd be able to um, get the extension without any penalties or? Um, um, yeah, the force majeure was, um, was requested by the contractor just because of that 70-day uh, um, delay um, because they couldn't, um, move their schedule um, that they uh, in a direction they wanted to. And so, again, they uh, asked for that extension with no um, additional cost. They're just looking for the time. So, again, that's what we have to be careful of. We have to make sure that we stay on schedule so that there's no um, possibility of having any additional costs associated with that. So we meet every two weeks um, with the contractor, with the engineer, and one of the... Um, um, one of the agenda items on that meeting is schedule and how we talk about how to get back on the schedule um, and, and, and cut those delays out. So it's, it's a fluid thing and we're working on reducing that, reducing that time. So they have to, and they have to ask permission for the extension. Um, they ask the committee first and then they come to administration where it's explained as to why they want it. Um, and we make sure that, uh, again, that it's not gonna cost the town extra money. Okay, so is there in the contract a penalty if you do, um, if you don't meet the, you know, if you do re need additional time? Was, was I remembering that right or what? Yeah, I believe there is. Oh, so, okay. so the contractor has, has, does have to complete the project within a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And, and we have to plan for unseen things. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Laura. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. I just want to thank you very much for your continued vigilance and taking care of this upgrade. I, I understand it's 
It's a lot of work. And you've answered the questions, many of them I had in my head too, so thank you very much. But keep up the good work and let's uh, get this done. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, thanks Rob. All right, thank you. Good evening. And I have a couple, a uh, couple stuff from my report. Uh, first reminders: the Arctic Splash is December fourth, twenty twenty one, at twelve thirty p.m. arrival, and the one p.m. is the splash. Um, we've had a low showing of town council people jumping into the um, <laughs> the pond. I'm hoping that the new people uh, step up this year and go ahead and jump in. I'll be on the microphone, or I would do it, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's December 4th. It's actually a good time. You guys should show up and, and just uh, cheer on those that do jump in. Uh, it is at 12.30 arrival, and their splash is at 1 p.m. It's a great fundraiser. Winterfest, December 3rd, 2021, at 5.30 p.m. Arrival with the parade starting at 6.15 p.m. So we're, we're moving it back to downtown. We're not doing the it up at Herring Park because um, the state police had frowned on us backing up traffic onto the highway. So we came back downtown. We are pushing for the light. We are gonna do the lights up at Harry Park again. In fact, um, I'm thinking about turning the lights on the day after Thanksgiving so that people can start driving through and enjoying them. I know it was very popular last year and uh, some people, uh, I was told, they drove through every single day. Um, so hopefully, uh, Mark, I'm going up to uh, to take a test run within the next week or so, and hopefully uh, they made it even better. Uh, the Canine Community Fundraiser. So uh, individuals hearing of the passing of Thor, uh, one of the police uh, department's canines, we started getting many calls from the community uh, asking how they, how they can assist. And if you remember that um, money was donated last time for our canine many years ago. and. We had, we had residents and businesses uh, calling right away and, and wanted to make donations. So um, Lisa Moody, who had actually ran the previous canine fundraiser, uh, volunteered to spearhead um, the cause. And the fundraising effort has already started. In fact, um, they've raised quite a bit of money already because people were so excited to, or, or people wanted to be part of this. And uh, you know, obviously in the end, I, I think they're gonna meet the goal for the new police dog. The fund that we already have is already been created by, this, by the council many years ago. And in fact, there's still some leftover money in there because that money can only be spent on the, uh, the police dogs and uh, basically for the new police dog and um, the, just the major items that the police dogs need. So it's going well. Um, like I said, uh, there's a group of people that, uh, of residents that took, that are taking part in, in helping with that fundraiser. Anyone interested in donating or assisting can contact uh, Lisa Moody at uh, mlisamoody at aol.com. That's M-L-I-S-A-M-O-O-D-Y at aol.com. All right, the Thanksgiving uh, Day football game between Rockville and Ellington is being held on Wednesday, November 24th at Rockville High School Stadium. Game time is 6.30 p.m. Come support the Rockville High School football team. Other events, the uh, citizen block groundbreaking, which many of you attended, uh, was at the end of October. The mayor and council members and others joined together to break ground on the next phase of citizens block redevelopment. If you came parked in the back, you saw the tractors out there, they're already uh, going to town on it. It's uh, exciting to see this renovation move forward upon uh, upon arrival this evening, oh, I just was about to say the same exact thing I already did, getting ahead of myself. But uh, it's exciting that this building that's been sitting vacant for so long is moving forward. We have a new uh, high school resource officer, uh, a police officer Allison Lawrence, uh, the first female resource officer at Rockville High School. Allison said she was inspired to become a school resource officer as a result her, of her own experience as a high school student and the report she built with her school's SRO. So congratulations to Officer Lawrence. Uh, the Town of Vernon Police Department has promoted a new sergeant. Uh, sergeant Greg St. Pierre was promoted yesterday. 
and uh, he has been with the police department for nine years, and we congratulate him on achieving the rank of sergeant. The two lieutenants in the back uh, opened up a spot for him. Actually, the two sergeants and the, the chief and the captain, they all opened it up because they all went up. Rockville General Hospital celebrated its 100th year anniversary, November 1st, 2021. A few of us were there for that as well. Invited guests were treated to refreshments after a ceremony held on the Kellogg, Kellogg lawn in front, uh, on the Kellogg lawn in front of the Maxwell Mansion. Um, you know, it was it's it's great to see the uh, hundredth year anniversary and listen to the history of it and the fact that it all started on Prospect Street in that small little building up there, and uh, to what it is today. You know, one of the things we took away is uh, that uh, they are opening inpatient. Um, services again. Uh, we're getting to the end of COVID, and uh, that's going to be really good to see. The TKB celebrated their 100-year anniversary last Saturday. Myself, uh, Terry, and Mike attended that. Uh, the anniversary of the Kosciuszko Benefit Society on the corner of Vernon Ave and West Main Street. Many current and former members were in attendance, and everyone enjoyed hearing the history of, of the organization. Um, the longest member out of the 100 years was there, 73 years as a member. That's a long time. I, yeah, we got to meet him. Food was good. Food was very good. The Vernon Public Schools hosted a job fair to seek the best of the best to fill a variety of positions. 50 people came to the fair and several strong candidates were identified. Rockville Public Library is expanding their hours again. The new hours are as follows. Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Thursday, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Friday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And Saturday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, uh, Director J uh, Jen Johnston said libraries are portals to the world's knowledge and the more we can uh, more we can be, the more we can be available to our community, the better we, we all are. Thank you, Jen, and our staff. Jen is here tonight. Trunk or Treat was a huge success again this year. Each group participating in the booths were to bring a minimum of 500 pieces of candy or other items to distribute. Uh, it's a fun event for the entire family. Uh, I want to thank the library again because we ran out of candy and they came prepared. We all had to run over and get candy from the library. Um, and I, I got to say, theirs was packaged much nicer, too. So thank you again, Jen. <laughs> the Vernon Historical Society produced a video featuring letters home from Rockville residents serving in World War II. And the Rockville High School Drama Club members joined the society in reading the letters that highlight the lives of Rockville residents who served with the Army, Navy, and Marine Corps during World War II, and collectively producing a video for all to see. Check out the YouTube link on the, the Town of Vernon website, which is www.vernon-ct.gov. Awards, the Town County Chamber recognized the Town of Vernon with their Corporate Citizen Award for our nationally recognized vaccine program. Uh, Chambers members Chris uh, Wardrop, 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 yes, nominated the town and des des described the evolution of the program from a small from small scale clinics in church to large clinics at Vernon uh, at the Vernon Senior Center and then mobile clinics, and then went into the community to reach those who had a difficult time accessing COVID-19 vaccine. Congratulations and thank you to everyone that made this vaccination program possible and so successful. And that ends my announcements for tonight. All right. Next is the consent agenda. Mr. Mayor, <clears throat> motion to move the consent agenda as written. Seconded by Marianne. Are we pulling any? Which one? Any others? Number, number four. Number four, okay. Please vote no on that. Yes. Julie. What's that? Pulled Julie pulled one and two, and pulled number four. All right, any others? All right, so we are voting for, for three and five. All right, all those in, in favor of three and five. Unanimous, all right, Brian. 
Mr. Mayor, resolve the Town Council hereby approves budget amendment requests number 29 and number 30 for fiscal year 2021 as outlined in the budget amendment forms provided by Finance Officer and Treasurer Jeffrey A. O'Neill. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mike. All right, Julie. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, good evening, Jeff. Um, on the banking fees, I know you've done a great job with finding ways to reduce them because I'm a, not an advocate of paying banking fees as you are. Um, have we investigated going to other banks and switching banks because of the fees and trying to get that? I'll ask you all my questions and you can, you can go through it. I'm sorry. Um, and then you mentioned in your notes that it was offset by the investment earnings of the 20,000. If you could explain the cost on the low interest rate environment versus earnings credits uh, didn't cover all the fees. And, in, and if you could please explain for even the new members here um, how the Connecticut short-term investment fund is utilized, I suppose. And then um, if I'm- we, we have to stick just to this. That, it's in there. And then just um, in the uh, appropriation in the account, it said there was 5,800. I just wondered if we were um, under budgeting for that and how that impacted um, our numbers. Thank you. Sure, thank you. Through the mayor, uh, number one, welcome new, mayor, new, new members. I uh, look forward to working with you all. Um, I will answer those questions. I believe I can answer them all. Yeah, um, I think. So the, the first is, um, we are currently not looking at different banking alternatives. What I am looking at is consolidation of our bank accounts. Um, I think I've mentioned this in the past where we have upwards of 75 bank accounts with a number of special funds, a number of different purposes. So one thing I am doing is looking to consolidate those down to reduce the amount of fees across the board. And are they all with the same bank? These are all with Bank of America, yes. Are, okay, yes. sorry, go ahead. Yes. So what happens within the bank is when we have the cash sitting there, we're, we're in a currently in a low interest envi rate environment. So the banks, technically, they, they don't really want your money because they can't do anything with it. They can't lend it out. They're having trouble. So they give us a credit for our balances sitting there. Bank of America gives us 19 basis points. However, that's quickly eaten up by, by the fees. They do charge us a, a service fee for leaving the balance there, and they also charge us fees for checks, ACH, wires, and all the other transactions we do. So when I look to net it out, I think it's, it's about one basis point we would earn by leaving our money in the bank. So the second step I do, I then look at the Connecticut Short-Term Investment Fund. So that's a AAA rated, it, it's focused on safety in 90 days. So it's very short-term money that they invest their cash into. That is earning nine basis points. So if you remember two years, we, we, we've had a few of these kind of, I think over the last two Two fiscal years, we earned about $900,000 in interest. Last year, we earned $20,000. Mm -hmm. So that tells you where the interest rate environment has gone. Mm -hmm. And there's not much we can do. We have explored other banks. We've expo um, looked for CDs, but again, there's there's not much, not much uptake on that. There's not much um, opportunity to really, for the longer term, it doesn't make sense because we are positioned. If interest rates do rise, we're positioned to move that money or keep that money in short-term investment fund, which will then immediately increase earnings. Okay. So I think it's and most of the questions. Under budgeting, did because we budgeted. Um, well, and we, we didn't really budget for bank fees. We didn't. What, what that number was was for the armored car transportation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that was at $5,800. We have reduced that as well. That used to be an everyday occurrence. Okay. We've reduced that down to twice a week during the busy tax season, once a week during the rest of the year. So that's a number we'll continue to budget. It will be, you know, we'll probably bring it down this year, but it's not bank fees because I, my hope is I offset the bank fees going forward. Great. I apologize. I thought that's what, it, no, what that's the true. budget sure. was. Thank you very much for explaining that. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any other questions on that? All right. All, all those in favor of uh, consent one? Unanimous. All right. <clears throat> Resolved the Town Council hereby approves budget amendment request number five for fiscal year 2021-2022 as outlined in the budget amendment form provided by Finance Officer and Treasurer Jeffrey A. O'Neill. Second by 
Second. Linda. Second by Linda. <coughs> As everybody knows, uh, the police dog was, was sick and they had to go to a specialty uh, uh, vet for care. All right, questions? Can I just ask a question? My computer is clear, so I can't see it, but we are on the amendment for the, the vet bills. Right. Okay, I apologize, I just couldn't see anything. Good evening, how are you doing? Um, I just had a question on the, um, when, when uh, Thor was going on the, the ongoing infections, was that something that um, was over a longer period of time, or you know, what, what brought it to the 16,000? Was it um, many, uh, many cases of the infection, or did he start off with a small infection and it got worse? I just wanted to understand what brought us to that amount. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, the infection started back in uh, the springtime, and it was just an ongoing autoimmune disease, taking multiple treatments okay. to try to treat as best as possible. Okay, and then um, just out of curiosity, you mentioned in the in the um, amendment that you used Piper uh, veterinarian. Is there a reason that we go down? Is it, are they in Middletown? that we go down to them? Is that like a contract thing or? No, it was a specialty vet that could deal with this. Oh, okay, I just didn't know. Do we have a contract with them or? No. So we don't, we don't pay them ongoing, it's only upon, uh, it's, per it's, instance. It's for that treatment. Okay, and all right, so we don't um, have to bid out for any veterinary care, it's just whoever you're going to. It's medical care, it's whoever we can find. Okay, I didn't know, I'm just asking the we, question. We, the rest of it we had, we, we stay local, but this was a specialty care. Okay. That he did that bet. And then um, do, do we have, uh, like, um, I know some people have, like, uh, private insurance policies for health care. Do they have that for the dogs? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I'm not sure. We don't have anything, I don't believe. No. If, if, the, if the dog dies in the line of duty, we have insurance, but uh, not for natural causes. You can get it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank Marianne. you. I just want to um, say I'm sorry for the loss. Uh, it's a tool, but it's also a family member for our police officers. Um, as a town council member, I completely support anything that you spent on this family member. Um, and I'm sorry of the outcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Marion. Anybody else? Mike. Through, through you, Mayor. Um, I would like to express my condolences to uh, his uh, part of our family. Um, could we, by chance, going on what Julie said, could we look into obtaining uh, insurance for our police dogs? Because I know. I have it for my dog. Um, you can't get it from reputable companies, and it will minimize cost for, you know, the immunizations, routine visits, stuff like that, and some will even cover surgeries. As long as you get it early enough when they're young, you know, and there's no outlining issues. I think it's, a, it's different as a home pet compared to a professional dog that's going to get into okay. different situations. I believe we looked at it before. Oh, okay. Thank you. Anybody else? No. All right. All those in favor? Unanimous. Mr. Mayor, number four, pursuant to ordinance number 242, the Vernon Town Council hereby approves the reappointment of Daniel A. Champagne, Mayor. 14 Park Place, Vernon, Connecticut, to the Bolton Lakes Regional Water Pollution Control Authority for a term beginning November 9th, 2021, and expires on November 13th, 2023. Seconded by Marianne. Thank you for raising your hand. <laughs> and uh, Ann. Yes, I asked the question. Are you um, vote no for me? What was that? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> um, no, I just wondered if you could um, talk a little bit about uh, why is the mayor on this board? Is this a requirement of, um, you know, 
I think it's an agreement with Bolton and Vernon. Is it a requirement yeah. that both uh, CEOs, so to speak, are on the uh, board? Well, sadly, both CEOs aren't. It actually was the former first selectman over there. Mm -hmm. It has always been the mayor is always the co-chair. Mayor Vernon is always the co-chair of, of the, um, the board. Mm -hmm. um, so when I came on, it's one of those things when you become mayor and you find out that, oh, yeah, by the way, you're doing this too and that too and this too. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually um, good that we have the leaders in there. And, um, so the Bolton, it is a former, the former selectman is actually um, the chair over there, but the selectman has always come to the meetings and been part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes on that Bolton Lakes Water Pollution Control Authority board. And having the CEOs as an intricate part of it is important. I mean, there's a lot of expenses that go on, a lot of stuff that you really need the town involvement to, to keep that running. Um, you know, one of the things that happened is um, we move forward so that we can include part of Coventry in this as well. So the board may look a little different in the future. And the reason that uh, we were in support of is because the amount of flow going through that system is a lot lower than we anticipated. But we can also, if we add more members, we can spread the cost out because the cost continues to grow. And when you have such a small board, it really, um, it, it's gonna start to get more expensive as the years go by. Uh, just a follow up question, how, how big is the board? Who else is on the board? Well, there's, there's residents from both Bolton and Vernon. Oh, so there and are, then, there are yeah. residents from Vernon. Rob Grosses is part of it as well. Makes sense. Uh, Mike McCarl yeah. um, comes over and sits in on it as well. Oh, okay. So. It has a lot of impact, so we, we, right. we truly need to stay on top of it. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? All right. All those in favor? Ah, darn. <laughs> Unanimous. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, that takes care of consent. All right, uh, new business number one. Mr. Mayor, the town council consistent with charter chapter 11, section five entitled other officers, hereby affirms Mayor Daniel A. Champagne's appointment of Louis A. Spadaccini, Esquire, as town attorney. Seconded by Linda. Questions? All right, all those in favor? Opposed? Abstain. Is it two or three? You gotta get your hand up or I can't see it. Three abstentions. Mary Ann's one. Ariana and Ann. You're welcome. All right. Mr. All right. Mayor. New two. The town council approves the transfer of thirty seven thousand two hundred and twenty six dollars and seven cents from available funds in the Board of Education operating budget fiscal year 2020-2021 to the Board of Education Reserve Fund for capital and non-recurring expenditures. Second. Somebody? Second. Second. Second by John. All right. Um, for the new people, let me go over what this is. So in the education budget, if um, funds are not, ex are not expended, they, at the end of the year, once all the books are balanced and everything, they come to the town council and the co town council reviews what money's left over, which is this, the $37,226.07. And what we started doing years ago is we would take whatever money's left over and we put it in the capital non-reoccurring account. That is for capital. Now before that money can be spent out of capital, it has to come before the town council and the town council votes on the projects. A lot of times those projects are contained within the budget. So when you look through the budget, you'll see some of the capital projects that'll be funded out of this capital non reoccurring. And our vote is basically given at that point. If throughout the year um, there's money in there and something pops up, we can vote as a town council to expend money out of there. If it's over a certain amount of uh, one tenth of 1% of our budget, it has to go out for a public vote. So we have say on what the expenditures are or the public has say on what the expenditures are. But what we're voting on right now is the remainder of the money, which is the $37,226.07. Uh, 
um, which will go into that fund. Questions? Julie. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Mr. McGarry. Good, um, Good the, evening. How are you doing? Um, how, how much total now is in our capital non recurring? So, our total capital non recurring is, is the microphone on? Sorry, Mayor. <laughs> Thanks. So, through the Mayor, our um, existing number now is $265,846 plus the 37. Oh, that includes that. Oh, it includes it. 265846 265846 Thank you. And, and with this increase of the 37000 is there um, any upcoming planned um, improvement that you're looking at, or is this still up in the air? So the, those plans have not been done through the mayor. Those plans have not been done yet for this upcoming summer. As you know, jointly, the town council and the board of education put together a $1.5 million project for the track and field, which was a great and we just finished paying that off now, so I think we're gonna take a little bit of a breath, start with the budget. Um, but we do have, thanks to the town council and the mayor, we do have the upcoming summer, the Center Road School roof project is all set to go for this coming summer. So we're still, you know, we spent a lot of money, 1.5 million. I think we might take a little bit of a break and see where we go from for the next project. I just wanted to ask you a question since you were so nice to come tonight, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, any other questions? No, all right, all those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Mr. Mayor, the Town Council hereby authorizes Mayor Daniel A. Champagne to execute a, memorand a memorandum of agreement on behalf of the Town of Vernon with the Department of Emergency Man Management and Homeland Security relative to the fiscal year 2021 State Homeland Security Grant Program and further agrees to be the custodial owner of regional assets. Second by Marianne. This is our yearly um, emergency management grant that we get from the state every year. Um, any questions? Julie? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. This is the 15,000 one that we're talking about right now? Yes. The 50%, the, e the EMPG or whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. Um, could, could, could you explain a little bit more how the reimbursement, how, how, what that goes towards? Could you be, explain that? Salary. I'll let Mike explain it. Thank you. As our emergency management director. Through the mayor, um, as the mayor indicated, this is an annual grant program, the emergency management performance grant. And especially for the newer council members, you're going to see there's a lot of acronyms that come from the state. So this is the EMPG, not to be confused with the HSPG, which is the other grant that's coming up in the agenda. Um, but this particular grant is based on a reimbursement of expenditures. There's a formulary as there are grants where the maximum amount amount of money that the grant could be um, applied for. We always maximize that full amount. Um, as you will see through the budget process, the operating budget for the Office of Emergency and Risk Management is $57,000. Based on the state formulary, uh, the most we can apply for is that 30,900 and change that you'll see in the application that was included in the packet. Um, of that, it's a 50-50% 50, 50, uh, 50 split. So that's where we come up with the $15,000 grant. To answer your question directly, now that you have the background, um, the expenditures are related to a multitude of operating expenses that are outlined in the grant. Telephone expenditure, expenditures for cell phones, for example, offsetting of the stipend for the emergency management director, office supplies. Again, not in total, but every little bit helps. And this is no, when we say match, I think it's important to clarify the match has already been provided in the appropriated budget in the $57,000. So we're not asking for any additional money to be appropriated. This is basically a $15,000 grant. Now you have the backup uh, and, the, and the, the formulary to understand how we got there. Mr. Bracow, are, are, is the grant the same or has it been the same over the years that you've applied or does it have a cost of living increase or does it, are you allowed to apply for more and you just, you know, for reasons of not having to spend it in the right areas, maybe you haven't applied for more. 
Through the mayor, um, the, in this particular grant, um, they have increased the amount um, and their formulary is based on a per capita formula that they used. Um, but what they also do is increase the performance measures. So you can see in the grant, uh, and we always, by the way, we always meet and exceed. We exceed every performance measure in our emergency um, and risk management program. Um, but there's training requirements, there's, there's planning requirements, um, there's uh, courses that, certain courses that have to be taken um, for us to qualify for the money. But I, I will reiterate, we maximize the full amount right to the last penny. We've never given back a penny. We always uh, go after the full grant available uh, amount of funds. Oh, wonderful. And just out of curiosity, when you're applying for these grants and, and you have to show these performance things, um, do, is it a lot of undue paperwork where you're doing this quarterly to meet their requirements or is it you apply for the grant and you're, you're reporting the following year what you did for the last 12 months? Through the mayor. Um, I would say out of all the state grants, this is probably one of the easiest ones. There's a quarterly report that we have to do for financials, and then the other ones, uh, they make it very easy. You know, did you complete these 12 courses this year? Yes or no? Yes. What are the dates? Send us a certificate, and that's it. Okay, so it's not un an undue paperwork burden. Through the mayor, not at all. Not okay. for this grant. Excellent. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Laura. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Picaro, is this a competitive grant ever? Is there any chance that this would not go through? Through the mayor, um, this, is, uh, and this is money that they set aside that we have to apply for, but it is not competitive. The, uh, the only requirements are is that we meet their performance thresholds in order to qualify for the money. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else? All those in favor? Unanimous. Brian? Mr. Mayor, be it resolved that the Town Council authorizes Mayor Daniel A. Champagne to execute all necessary paperwork to make application for and receive fiscal year 2021 Emergency Management Performance Grant, EMPG funding, offered by the State of Connecticut Department of Emergency Services and Public Protection in the amount of $15,348.08. Second. Seconded by Julie. Questions? Julie. Sorry. To you, Mr. Mayor. Um, maybe if you don't mind, you or Mr. Picaro could explain. I, I was reading the memorandum of agreement on the, and, and it appeared to me that there was like a million seven hundred and twenty-five thousand, but then it appears that it's like a, is the, the DEMH is retaining it. Could you just, you know, explain to us how how that works? So uh, basically, we just mixed the two up. Mike Picaro just uh, basically gave you a whole definition of uh, the, the second grant. And um, so everybody just voted on um, everything Mike just gave you wasn't what you just voted on. He, he, um, Mike Picaro messed the whole thing up. Yeah. <laughs> That's my job. That's a first. <laughs> but you know what? Um, Mike, why don't you go ahead and explain the second one? And um, well, no, explain the explain the other one. So we got them both under through through the mayor. My apologies. I heard EMPG, and that's the one I was speaking on. But uh, the the grant for the Homeland Security uh, Program grant. Um, this is a, a regional grant that goes to Region Three. Um, and I'm going to lay it out very simply. There's a lot of language in small fine print in the contract that's included. Um, but the gist of it is, is there's $1.725 million that comes from the federal government to state homeland security. They're the state administrating authority, the SAA, um, for these funds. And it's specifically allocated for regional uh, planning and uh, operational purposes related to emergency management. Um, that $1.725 million then gets further broken apart to the five DEMIS, the Department of Emergency Management and Homeland Security regions, which, by the way, do not coincide to any counties or any other 
uh, districts out there. So, um, and, and, and there's 41 towns in Region 3 that we participate in. Um, 41 towns in Region 3. And so of the 1.725 million, Region 3 has appropriated $385,000 in change, of which I believe it's about 75,900 or 76,000 approximately, specifically allocated for regional bomb squad operations. So the, the purpose and ask of this particular grant, the Homeland Security grant, um, is twofold. The first, the first part is our participation in um, joining with the other 41 towns in Region 3 um, and allowing the State Homeland Security to give this money to our RPO, which is the Regional Planning Organization for Region 3, which happens to be designated as the Capital Region Council of Governments. They have an emergency planning commission that manages this money for a regional basis. So we're giving permission in part by, by your, author, your resolution, authorizing resolution, um, to allow them to manage the money and pool it on a regional basis, which actually benefits all of us. And by doing so, that $300,000 provides a, um, uh, an exponentially better benefit than us getting a small portion of it. We can do so much more if we work together as a region and pool that money together. And the example I've used year, year after year more for the benefit of the newer council members is we are the custodial owners of a decontamination trailer. So they gave us the vehicle to tow the trailer and the trailer itself, something that we would never be able to afford if we were just to accept a small slice of that 385,000 on our own. But as a region, we purchased it. Purchased it. Vernon uh, volunteered to be the custodial owners of it. So we operate it, we deploy it for any Vernon purposes or for any other regional purposes if we're called upon. And other towns do the same thing with these, with these assets. So part two is we acknowledge that we will continue to be a custodial owner and maintain the, the decontamination trailer and the towing vehicle that's been given to us. Well, thank you for that clarification. I just wasn't as understanding of the memorandum and I wanted to get a further explanation. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Um, does anybody, so we have an explanation on both of these. Does anybody have an issue with the vote that we took now that you have the complete? No, nobody does. All right. Any other questions on um, what we just talked about? These, again, these are yearly um, grants. Linda. Yes, through the mayor. Um, so I am curious, where is this decon decontamination trailer kept? Is there a maintenance issue with it? All right, so that's something we bought under a, a totally different part of this grant. It was years ago we bought it. The fire department maintains and keeps it and trains on it and has firemen associated with it, but that's actually not part of what we're talking about tonight. But. That's where it is. Thank you. Yep. And basically, we have turned down equipment in the past as well. So they had a, uh, a very heavy vehicle, like multiple, uh, it was like 12 tons or something that we did not have a concrete pad to store. So I turned that down because it would have sunk into all of our parking lots. So it actually weighed more than that. Um, so, all right, any other questions? No? All right, all those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay. And we got to add um, the library grant. That's it. Mr. Mayor, you want me? We're going to go to uh, additional items. So we got to start by a vote of adding the uh, Rockville Public Library. So I, I'm, we're going to ask tonight to add an additional agenda item. It's the Rockville Public Library grant. And the reason we're asking for that is because there's a deadline that if we wait till the next um, meeting, we would miss the deadline and it is a grant for $10,000. So we're gonna start by asking to add this um, additional item, and then we vote on that, and then we um, will vote to, um, to um, do we have a motion on this? <laughs> we do. Motion to buy. Oh, you got it, okay. So we're gonna call for the vote on um, adding the additional agenda item first. All those in favor of the additional agenda item? Right, unanimous. Brian? 
Mr. Mayor, the Town Council authorizes the Rockville Public Library to apply for and receive a survey and planning grant through the State Historical Preservation Office in the amount of $20,000. Further, the Town Council authorizes Mayor Daniel A. Champagne or his designee to sign any and all documents for same. Second. Seconded by Marianne. All right, so, um, that's right, it's $20,000 and then we have a matching $10,000. The library has a, 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 a fund that uh, I believe that's where the $10,000 will be coming from. Jeff, is that correct? Thank you. It's from the endowment fund. All right, questions? Bill. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, through you, does this vote authorize the $10,000 matching funds? Or will that be required to be a separate motion? I think if we get the grant, then we will deal with that then. Okay. There's no guarantee on the grant right now. Thank you. Okay. All right, anybody else? Brian? Mr. Mayor, through you to Ms. Johnson, thank you for coming tonight. Do you have an idea of how much this project will cost? Sorry. Uh, through the mayor, at this point, not exactly. Um, it was recommended by um, the staff in this office that we go for the full amount just to make sure that we were covered. I, th I think I meant more for the cost of the step. It's going to cost more than that. More than this, yes. Yeah. So, Because it says this is just a plan survey and planning grant. Correct. Yeah. So you, you, you don't have any idea of, yeah. No. I didn't think so, neither. It would just be a guess. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any other questions? No? Okay. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Uh, adoption of, let's do the minutes and then we'll go into executive session. Sure. Mr. Mayor, the Town Council waives the reading of the minutes of the regular Town Council meeting of October 19th, 2021, and moves said minute, and said minutes be approved. Seconded by Mike. All right, is there any corrections, deletions in those minutes? Okay, all those in favor? Unanimous, okay. All right, um, executive session number one. Mr. Mayor, the town council pursuant to the authority given in Connecticut General Statutes 1-206D hereby goes into executive session to discuss contract negotiations and invites Michael J. Picaro, Town Administrator, and Sean Gately, Economic Development Director, to attend. Who said that? Second by Jim. All right, all those in favor? Terry, are you opposed? Oh, you're for it. Uh, unanimous. <laughs> all right. Brian. First executive order. Mr. Mayor, the town council moves to approve adding an additional senior systems engineer to the data processing department, sorry, data processing department, and approves appropriating $65,000 from the general fund to the data processing internal service fund. Seconded by Bill. Um, all those in favor? Unanimous. Brian. Mr. Mayor, the Town Council, consistent with the Town of Vernon personnel rules and regulations, Section 4.1B, entitled Job Descriptions, hereby adopts the job descriptions of ZEO slash Property Maintenance Inspector and Planning and Zoning Specialist, and approves appropriation of an additional $5,856 to fund the position of Planning and Zoning Specialist. Seconded by Ann. <laughs> All those in favor? <laughs> Unanimous. <laughs> Brian. Mr. Mayor, the Town Council hereby authorizes Mayor Daniel A. Champagne or his designee to enter into an agreement with Opportunity Works Connecticut to support their purchase of Therap, LLC document management software, Chromebooks, training, and other support items in the amount of $16,013. Seconded by Mary Ann. All those in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs>
seconded by Julie. <laughs> All those in favor? Yeah. All right, unanimous.